Are you wondering if you need a pressure regulator? For your irrigation system, there are very few situations in which you can get away with not using a pressure regulator. One of the things we see a lot on systems running without a pressure regulator are complaints about fittings popping off, goof plugs coming out, button drippers popping out of the tubing, and people feel like they have to babysit their system. Using higher pressure than you need is very inefficient when it comes to irrigation. It makes things more susceptible to misting, wind drift, or it can even damage the components in your irrigation system if they're not rated for that kind of pressure. Let's cover the many considerations that not only go into finding out if a pressure regulator is needed, but how to know which one you need. Though it can vary a bit by location, most residential water pressure is going to be between 30 and 60 PSI. In drip irrigation, most components are gonna operate best between 10 and 30 PSI. So you're gonna want the operating pressure of the system you're designing to fall within that range. It's easy to test the pressure. All you need to do is get a threaded pressure gauge, thread it onto the water source, open it to its fully open position, and then read the number on the dial. If that pressure is higher than the operating pressure of your emitters, you are going to need a pressure regulator. Once you've determined the operating pressure range of your emitters, it is time to determine what kind of connection you need on your pressure regulator. This connection should match the connection on your water source or valves, basically where you're gonna be connecting the pressure regulator. If you have a hose bit, you want a hose threaded pressure regulator. If you're coming out of a standard irrigation valve, you'll probably want a pipe threaded. Once you have determined the connection type, you wanna make sure that the flow rate of your system falls within the flow rate range of the pressure regulator. Most pressure regulators can only operate within a specific flow rate range. For example, our signature hose threaded pressure regulators are compatible with flow rates between 30 and 420 gallons per hour. To determine the flow rate of your irrigation system, add up all the emitters that will be operating at once or on one zone. A system using 200 half gallon per hour drippers will have a flow rate of 100 gallons per hour. In most systems using multiple valves, a pressure regulator will be needed at each valve outlet. This is because most pressure regulators are not rated for constant pressure, so they have to be relieved of pressure when the system is not in use. Another reason is that it's not uncommon for differing zones on an irrigation system to have different pressure requirements. The prime example that comes to mind is raised beds being fed by a drip irrigation system and a lawn being fed by sprinkler rotors or a spray body system. In rare cases where each zone can operate at the same pressure, there is one pressure regulator line that can handle constant pressure, the Sinninger PRLV. That pressure regulator is able to be placed upstream of valves so that it can regulate pressure for all your zones. To sum things up, irrigation systems, drip irrigation systems in particular, have specific pressures that they like to operate, or at least a small pressure window. If the pressure of your water source exceeds that, you're going to want to regulate downstream pressure to ensure you have an efficiently operating irrigation system and to protect the components from possible pressure damage. Which regulator you will need depends on the following factors. The connection type of your water source, the flow rate of your zones, and the operating pressure range of your emitters. Now that you know how important pressure regulators are to efficient irrigation, who doesn't need a pressure regulator? If you already have very low pressure, such as in a gravity system, you may be one of the few who can get away without using a pressure regulator. This is because pressure regulators require higher inlet pressure than what they regulate to by about five to 10 PSI. A 10 PSI pressure regulator is gonna require 15 to 20 PSI on the inlet side, something you probably won't see in a lot of gravity systems. So more than likely, you do need a pressure regulator. To help figure out which pressure regulator you need, check out our pressure regulator decision tree right here. If you need assistance designing your own drip system, check out our step-by-step -step guide right here.